I mean, I hope in our conversation you just don't force me to talk about that mine. I can't really pronounce the name properly. This decision that you've made to merge with BT Gold, tell us the value for the company and the value for Namibia's gold mining industry. Oh, well, listen, thank you very much for having me. And uh, he, you did a pretty good job. Most people have a difficult time with it. It's Oji Koto. Oji Koto. And, and the, the B2 Orcs merger, listen, uh, we see this as a win-win-win situation for pretty much all stakeholders involved in the project. Um, Oji Koto was discovered back in 1999. Uh, due to the low gold price, it, it wasn't advanced very quickly. Uh, and then the company it sat in, uh, had its, uh, its focus on copper and, and other projects more so than developing a gold asset in Namibia. We saw the opportunity back in uh, uh, as, as early as 2009 that this asset would be coming available. Oryx Gold acquired the asset and have advanced it here to its initial economic mm. study and demonstrated that there's a viable gold mine there. Uh, B2 uh, is, uh, is the successor company of uh, what was a, a very large mm. and successful Canadian gold mining company called Bima Gold. And BIMA is, is, is a team of uh, uh, people who have financed, built, and operated right. assets in many uh, varied operating jurisdictions around the world. They look at Namibia as being a top-tier mining jurisdiction. They look at Ojikoto as being a, a project that can have right. a significant impact onto, um, uh, to their production profile and to their reserves. Right. And uh, to help them achieve their ultimate goal of becoming a, a million-ounce gold producer. Right. Oryx, what we benefit from is... is uh, uh, we, we retain significant upside. Our, our shareholders retain significant upside in the OG Koto project. Mm. Uh, we have risk greatly reduced as, on going forward on the development side. And plus, we get exposure to B2's other assets in Nicaragua, Colombia, and Uruguay. Okay. Now, OG Koto has a forecasted uh, capacity to produce about 100,000 ounces over the next 10 years. But uh, it's believed that a lot of the work is still on the exploration side as opposed to the production side. And I think you've alluded to that. The question is, why go into a project where you're still going to need to do a lot more of the groundwork before you see some of the profits accrue? Listen, OG Koto, what we've demonstrated with our uh, preliminary economic assessment that uh, has just been released uh, uh, close to a month ago, was that there's a mine there. There's a mine there right now, and uh, permitting, uh, you know, uh, just permitting aside and, and capitalization of the asset aside, there is a mine that could be in production in, in very short order. So this thing is a, is, is, is a project that can be very quick to cash flow, yet it has significant expiration upside surrounding it. And listen, this is why mm. B, not only B2, but a number of other gold companies were, right. uh, bigger gold companies were looking at this project. The commercial value for you, and I'll explain why I say this to you, Tim. If you look at South Africa, increasingly the gold miners are having to go deeper and deeper below the Earth's surface. The technological costs are rising, and it definitely doesn't um, help to mitigate by the fact that uh, uh, gold prices are somewhere in the region of 1,650 moving upwards. So there is a sense that, you know, you bleed a lot more cash in gold mining than you're likely to make it, even in a high price system. For you, what are the opportunities in Namibia? How are you going to countenance some of these uh, real issues on the technological side of the industry? Well, listen, uh, the, there's a lot of benefits to where we're operating in, in, in uh, Namibia. We are within three kilometers of road, rail. We have sufficient water at site. We have power within 15 kilometers of the project. Uh, that, that's going to greatly reduce the capital uh, cost to develop this asset. Operating cost, is the grade is pretty high for an open pit mine. You're looking at probably 1.7, 1.9 grams a ton. So those are all significant benefits. Commercial value in this environment Listen, at, at a $1,300 gold price, which we did our economic uh, assessment at, demonstrated a pre-tax mm -hmm. uh, net asset value of $300 million. Our market, uh, before we announced the merger with B2, our company was trading at a market mm -hmm. value of, uh, you see, about uh, $70 million with 30 right. in cash. So there's, there was a huge uh, opportunity right. there for, for B2. And listen, we're going to benefit dramatically as this thing gets into production. Okay, just before we end, we know that the Namibian government's been talking about a review of mining licenses. It's got many prospective investors quite jittery because they're not sure whether existing licenses still hold and whether the review will be on licenses still to be issued within this kind of regulatory environment. How secure is this investment that you're going to make? Yeah, listen, everybody hears the first news and they don't hear on the follow-on. Listen, that, 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 that item's been, uh, been clarified. Namibia has come out and, uh, and said very clearly this is not going to impact uh, pre-existing licenses. In fact, it would be unconstitutional for them to try and impact 
make it a, make a, a proposal that impacts on previously granted licenses. There's no problem here. And listen, uh, Namibia is a top-tier mining jurisdiction that is very poorly understood. And with a group like B2 in here going and talking to North American and European investors regularly in the following they have and their ability to develop assets, when B2 has this asset in production in, uh, in uh, three to possibly four years, the world is going to look and say, hey, geez, Namibia is a place you can do business, and that's going to be a dramatic impact for this country.